Hey everyone, Matt here from Herbal House and in this video we are taking a look at the, well, what we would refer to as the three layer hydroponic tier kit. So essentially this hydroponic kit is a snap together Lego system as you can see you've got a few parts in front of me and what you do is you pretty much assemble that kit to suit your needs. Now it is designed to assemble into three layers which gives you a total of 108 plant sites. I'll run through those parts shortly. The idea is for a lot of domestic growers they're looking for a system they can just piece together, put in their conservatory or somewhere sunny and essentially just plug in a pump and let it do its thing apart from adding nutrients here and there. So a really great system in that regard but first of all I am going to run through the componentry here because there's a lot going on here and realistically you can assemble this kit to suit your needs. As you'd see in our product description or the photos, it is laid into three, which is what I'm going to be building today. However, I'm just going to run you through those parts below. Okay, so I'm starting with the instructions, which are they're rather vague, but um, they'll get you there by the looks of things. So I'm just going to follow these and put the system together as best as I can. I've laid out a few bits and bobs. Basically for the uh, frame here, we're going to be using these longer pipes, which are included in the kit, of course, and the T-joints. So that's going to help me make this frame up. Oh, sorry, and there's a couple of just 90 degree elbows in there by the looks, but uh, let's get started. Now I will mention if you're not using any solvents or glue to piece this together, uh, you will find there's a little bit of tension when you're pushing these fittings in. You can just lean on them if you need to and they'll pop right in. So they're pretty good to work with, just like Lego. Okie dokie. So this is the frame. So I've got a few little bits left over here which I'm sure we'll probably use later. Uh, but this is the gist of it. So if you really wanted to uh, make this a little more rigid I'd recommend using some solvents and glue but probably piece it together first once and then pull it apart and do it in sections just to make sure you've got it right. Always make sure things are straight as you can because this one has been assembled on not exactly flat floor. So. Looks good as it is, and what we're going to do is we're going to move on to piecing together the actual troughs and getting them in here. But as you can see, we've got essentially three layers here. They would pass through like so. Let me just find one, I believe. They'll just lay in the base like that. So let's get a whole bunch of these put together and uh, get them assembled in the frame. Okay, so to get us started on the troughs, I'm just actually going to move this just out of the way because it's probably best to start with these and bang these end caps on first. So I'll just quickly do that. Just give them a quick tap, just like so. Easy as that, and that should hold water and remain leak free around the edges there, but uh, I'm just gonna go through and do all of those now. So now that we've pushed all those end caps on, it's gonna get a little bit fiddly, but we're gonna be pushing the uh, assembly together and getting this on the rack, or the tower, sorry. So. With that in mind, um, being aware that it is PVC on PVC, so things are going to roll around a bit. Um, one thing to note is when you are putting this together is the pipes are designed to be in series. So that means water flows through one into the next, into the next, into the next. So you're not doing a parallel circuit. All the pipe work will have to go in series. Now if you don't know what that means, you'll see by the end exactly how that works. So I'm just going to go ahead and piece this all together. So. It's four per rack. It's going to roll around. We really should have cleaned the floor beforehand. We did a cocoa video before and we've made a huge mess. So, all right, four per layer. So with that in mind, I've got those there and I've got, I've just made up a joiner here, which is a couple of elbows and short piece of PVC. So I'm just going to push that into this one, push that into this one. And I'm going to make up two more of those to loop off the back. Get 
minutes. Okay, so with that laid out just like so, being the bottom layer, what we'd have is there's going to be a drain on this one. So that's one of these longer pieces with an elbow, with a short joiner. And it's just gonna go there. So basically this is uh, where you're gonna have your reservoir tank, whether it be a bucket or a cut out piece of Tupperware, whatever works to pretty much have the water drain back into and where the pump is gonna sit to feed to the top. But let's continue. Okay, so now that I've just built the uh, second tier like so, we're going to connect to the lower one. Which is just a long piece with two joiners. So I'm just going to rotate that. Right, and that's the second tier connected to the first. And we're gonna build another. So last but not least is the feed line. So there is this plastic hose here. What I'd probably recommend doing is soaking it in a cup of warm water and that is just going to push over the barbed end of this fitting. So I'll just give that a go with it as is. Right, not too bad, but if you warm it up it becomes a lot softer and it's much easier to fit. So that's going to be feeding up to the top there. Just a little joiner in the end, push that straight on there. Okay, so pretty much we have a three, three tier hydroponic tower built as is. Now, bear in mind the way I've pushed this together might be the odd water leak, in which case just apply a bit more pressure and push those parts together because I've kind of rushed this. But that is how we have laid it out. So for a lot of people, you don't have to do it exactly like this. You could easily have one long tray or bench and connect all of them in a series, um, completely flat. Just keep in mind that there is a water level in here, so if you've got this on a lean, one end might have a little more water than the other. Not the end of the world as long as the water is flowing. Okay, so just to cover the uh, timer module that's on the power cable for the pump here, you've got two little green lights and two buttons there. So pretty much what this is gonna mean is every time you push that button, you're adjusting, for, the, for instance, this bottom button is gonna adjust how many minutes the pump is off for, and the top button is adjusting how many minutes it is on for. So those colors are just representing what it is set at. So right now it's on for 30, off for 15. So a really easy way to adjust how long the pump is going for. So we thought this was quite convenient for a lot of people who don't want to actually plug in a mechanical timer, saying you could of course do that if you absolutely had to. Okay, so I've just got the uh, little water pump here and I haven't plugged it in yet because you want to plug them in when they're submerged, that's what they're designed to do. I've got the other end of the clear tube, the other end is connected at the top of the uh, system there. So what you're going to do is just slip that over the top of the outlet of the pump. Now just bear in mind this little plastic thing is removable, so you always want to make sure that that is seated in there and like so. It does have three little suction cup feet, so what you're going to do is just plant that in the bottom of the reservoir and it's pretty much good to go. Now just mentioning the reservoir here that we've chosen, we've just found a uh, piece of Tupperware, perfect. Uh, 
what you'll find is when you initially start the system up is the uh, troughs are going to fill with water and they are going to hold that water. So even when the pump stops, a fair bit of water is going to be held in these. So you might find on initial startup, you might need to top this up a bit just to get it up and running. But after that, it'll just be supplying the water and off it goes. So let's plug this in. Like so, all right, so that is now filling the system and we'll just give you a quick rundown on how you would uh, pretty much apply, or sorry, seat your seeds into the uh, wick cups. Okay, so as you can see, we've just uh, rested these wick pots in here like so. So what will happen is when this system is cycling water through it, about the wick pot will be submerged to about halfway up. So we wouldn't necessarily recommend germinating seeds in there. You certainly could, but you just want to ensure that these are nice and moist when the seed is germinating and nice and warm depending on the seed. Most tend to prefer a warm climate, in which case you're probably better off germinating in the sponge itself somewhere else in a prop dome or something like so. So what you do is you just rip this off here, got your little cube and it's got a little cut out there. Conveniently these actually come with a pair of tweezers so you just drop your seed in there, get that nice and hydrated and put it away for when it's ready to germinate. Once germinated and you've got some little sprouts coming out the side there, you're just going to pull out your wick pot and just gently drop that in there as low as you can and drop it in like so. So from there your plants are going to start to grow, they're going to be exposed to the water. That water should ideally have some nutrient in it because of course this is a hydroponic system. You might adjust that nutrient to suit the plants you are growing and the pH levels if necessary. Uh, but I will say that with a system like this in this many holes, depending what you're growing, you might actually be better off alternating and going every second. And uh, if you are growing in every second hole, that's no problem at all. What we would recommend, pro tip, is covering the holes you aren't using. And that's just going to help prevent things like algae growing in your water because it absolutely loves when there's sunlight hitting the water. And if that is the case, no stress at all, just use some tin foil and just wrap it around the holes you aren't using. That's going to help reflect some light back up at the plants you are growing and everything is going to be very happy. So with a system like this, you've got 108 flower sites technically, or plant sites, sorry. So you've got plenty of options for growing. Now I will mention as well, being a three layer system, if you are doing this with indoor growing, you wanna ensure there is adequate light getting to the layers below, in which case you might have some LED bars trapped in there, or have this leaning on a slight angle so it's facing towards another light source. Nevertheless, if this was outdoors in a greenhouse, the sun rising and passing over the top will help ensure there is more adequate light distribution, but bearing in mind that the lower level is most likely going to see less light than the top, so you might stagger what you're growing in relation to that. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, please get in touch with us here at Herbal House.